Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. If you attended Microsoft Ignite, then you noticed that there were a lot of announcements about co-pilots, co-pilots and more co-pilots. In this video, I will be discussing the co-pilots for service, which is in preview today. This allows you to create your own custom co-pilot, which you can also hook up to third-party applications such as Zendesk, Salesforce and ServiceNow. If you want to learn more, I'll be right back right after this. Now, as you might know, there's a ton of different co-pilot types, right? Each with their own unique experience. So think about Microsoft 365 co-pilot, which is more uh, a personal assistant, or think about co-pilot for Dynamics 365 sales, which allows sales reps to get summaries for leads and opportunities and a whole bunch of other things. And then obviously we also have co-pilot for Dynamics 365 customer service, right? Which helps agents to do their work faster by helping to draft emails, searching knowledge articles in Dynamics 365 to solve cases more quickly, etc. So here we're talking obviously about Microsoft Copilot for service, right? So you're going to wonder, okay, what's the difference with Copilot for service versus Copilot for Dynamics 365 customer service? Well, the most important one is really the ability in Copilot for service to extend Copilot. So what that means is that out of the box, Copilot for Dynamics 365 customer service, like I just mentioned, right, allows agents to utilize Copilot to solve cases more quickly. And it does that, for example, by looking at knowledge articles that you have in Dynamics 365 but you can't extend any of the functionality there, which we can do with Microsoft Copilot for service. And you'll see that as I am going to go through some of the things that we can do here. So the first thing you'll need to do is you will need to sign up for a preview and the link for to get access to this preview, I will actually drop that here. Uh, in the description of the video as well. So obviously the only thing you have to do here is click sign up for preview. That will take you to a new window where you're going to have to enter an email address. And if you don't have a Microsoft 365 account related to that <clears throat> email address, then it will actually uh, sign you up for that M365 account as well. Now I've already gone through this steps. It recognized that I had a Microsoft 365 account related to that email. And then after I went through all these steps, it then took me to Copilot for service. So let's take a look. So here we are in the preview for Copilot for service. And you also notice that I actually needed to select an environment for that as well. So that's where the copilot is going to be created. Let's go ahead and start to create a copilot. We're just going to click here on this button and that's going to start that process. So now, as you can see here below the step one of two, it says to connect to Dynamics 365 customer service and its omni-channel engagement capabilities, create a copilot here. So just to clarify, we cannot create our own Dynamics 365 customer service copilot, right? That has been created by Microsoft. And Microsoft also is saying use that copilot if you have Dynamics 365 for customer service and those omnichannel engagement capabilities. What you can do here is you can create a copilot that you can utilize with other third party applications. So that's what we're doing here with copilot for service. What I can do here is you can see I cannot change the language but I can change my copilot name. So I'm just going to call this Zendesk 
Copilot because I created a Zendesk account and that's what I'm going to utilize in this Copilot. So I'm going to click next and you'll notice before I can actually create my Copilot, I can do a couple of things here. I can enter a website, right? You can have one or multiple, I believe, I hope multiple websites here. And then I can also connect to a customer engagement service. Again, this is optional, right? But I have the ability to hook this up to Salesforce service now or Zendesk. Now I already created a Zendesk account and I created a couple of knowledge articles in there as well. So from here, you're going to click setup and this is going to allow you to connect to that particular app. So I'm going to click here on setup and it's going to load. And now you can see here, cause I tried this earlier and that's why it's saying, Oh, your test connection failed. So I'm going to click on that again and I'm going to put in here my company name, which is Taylor Inc support. And then I'm going to, let's just do this again, Inc support, and I'm going to sign in. So this is just going to allow me right to, or it's going to, I'm going to allow Microsoft power platform to access my Zendesk account. So I'm going to say allow here. And now it's signing in to create that connection. And there you go. I am now connected to Zendesk. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and close this. And we can also see here that we're connected successfully from here. Now you can also, right, add the service now connection and I can add the Salesforce connection as well. But I, at this particular point, I only did Zendesk. And now I can go ahead and create my copilot. So let's go ahead and just click on create. And as you can see here, this is just going to take a couple of minutes here. And once the copilot is created, then you're going to be taken to your copilot. So you can see here, I'm actually currently at my Zendesk copilot and it's loading this overview window, right? So this is going to allow me to test my copilot. I can also view the solution of this copilot. As you can see here, this is going to allow me to manage additional content sources. So if I click on that, that's going to allow me to add a third party service. You saw earlier that I added Zendesk and I can see here that the status is connected and enabled. And if I want to add an additional third party service like Salesforce or ServiceNow, I can do that directly from within here. This is also where you can manage your websites and also where you can manage SharePoint and OneDrive connections. As you can see here, it does require additional end user authentication for SharePoint and OneDrive to work. And then lastly, we also have the ability to upload documents. So as you can see here, this is right. Just like we saw with uh, power virtual agents before, that's now called Copilot Studio, where we were also able to upload these uh, documents here and use the documents as a source as well. So if I go back here to my overview, we kind of looked at uh, the content resources, but we can also do a little bit of configuration in here as well. So when I click on configure, and you can see that takes me here to configure Copilot as well. This is going to allow you to set up different messages, right? So here is the conversation start message. That's the greeting to the agents, the no match message, right? If, if there is not a response to the agent's input, you can modify that as well. The greeting response, <clears throat> the start over confirmation, start over message, and then the thank you response as well. So you have access to that directly from within here. And then if I scroll down a little bit, this is also where you're going to publish your copilot. And this is going to allow you this section that says access your copilot. This is going to allow you to connect your copilot either to Microsoft Teams or to share it in a different way, right? For example, adding it to a console. And what that means is that could be directly inside 
of Zendesk or any of the other options that you had that you saw when I clicked on content resources. So if I click on this, right, this is kind of showing you all the different, uh, the different code, I almost want to say, right, that we have here if you wanted to embed Copilot in a different application. So you can use that for this as well. And you can also see by clicking on that, this takes me to channels, right? So I can go ahead and throw that. So I can go ahead and throw that on Microsoft Teams on a custom website. Here you can see that console and then here that mobile app as well. And then you can also see there's some security options here as well that you can configure. It's just going to take a couple of seconds here to load. And as you can see, that now loads this particular Copilot inside of Copilot Studio, where now you can do other things as well, right? You can do more extending of that Zendesk Copilot directly from within here. Now, let's go back to the Copilot for service so that we can test, right? What I just set up. So before I go back to Copilot for service, I first wanted to show you uh, this environment that I have set up for Zendesk. And as you can see, I actually just created this one knowledge article. All of these were already in there, but this is really a knowledge article about an HVAC unit that is not blowing air. So now again, because I set up that integration between Zendesk and my Copilot for service, it should now be able to go through my articles. And then if the agent is asking about an issue where the HVAC is not blowing warm air, there's something wrong with it, whatever, it's going to use this or any other articles I might have here inside Zendesk, uh, use that as a source. So let's take a look and make sure that that's actually working as well. Okay, so here we are back in my Zendesk Copilot. So let's just go ahead and see if it can answer my question. My HVAC unit is not heating. And now it should utilize, right, that connection that it has to Zendesk. And it did. So you can kind of see here it's a... Uh, it's telling me a lot of different things. Check the filter, replace the air, verify the power switch. And you can also kind of see, I can click on this to actually get access to that article directly from within here as well. I hope this video kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what we can do with Copilot for service. Microsoft said it's looking to go into general availability with this product in the first quarter of 2024. And the license is going to be 50 US dollar per user. Uh, but that will also include Microsoft 365 Copilot as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.